In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Mattel Grogu plush so it looks more like this. Okay, this is what you're going to need for this project. Masking tape, various different colours. These are the ones I suggest. You don't need to get the exact ones, but this sort of colour family. Mr. Super Clear is a matte varnish that is extremely toxic, so please use with care. And if you can't get hold of that, Citadel will do fine. Some sort of glossy varnish and some scissors to remove the cable tie that secure his wrists and neck. Please be extremely careful when using scissors. If you are a child, please get an adult to do this for you. As you can see, you sort of need to find where the cable ties are, move away any fabric, and then anchor the scissors in a way so that you can easily snip them off. I've done this a bunch of times, um, because I've done this to a bunch of baby odors at this point. This is deeply haunting, I'm very sorry. I will also be doing mods to this Grogu's body, such as adding feet and extending his arm length and making him a new coat. The first step is to mask out his eyes. I do this by placing masking tape and using an implement to gently nudge it around the rim and either fold it back down over the eye or place it under the eyelid. I tried to get a lot of footage of this so you could see exactly how I was doing it. You don't need it to be perfect, you just need it to be covered. Then with some scissors I very very gently removed the excess, making sure to leave his eyelid visible for painting. Again, if you are a child, please get an adult to do this. Now we've fully masked out his eyes, we can move on to the next stage. Painting. Um, I'll be using this airbrush. If you don't have an airbrush, I suggest using very watered down, very, very watered down layers of paint. I don't have exact ratios off the top of my head, but um, to the point where it's pretty much a sheer tint uh, that you'll be putting over. So I start off with the green blue color as the base trying to evenly distribute it to all the different areas. When you look at photos of the Grogu uh, puppet, you can see that he has this very uh, green-blue skin colour with a warm undertone, which is why I'm trying to uh, thinly apply this on the ears and back of the head to give that underglow of green still. I try to leave the tips of the ears that same green. I will say this mod works a lot better on the soft, um, I believe it's the Mattel rather than Disney store Grogu dolls. There is a difference, but this is one of the other ones because I couldn't get a hold of the soft green ones. I apply it to the hands and you can sort of see that color difference. Um, when I apply it to the hands, I try and leave again the tips of the finger, that bright green color. So here I am just double checking my references for the project. Um, make sure that you always keep references with you when you're working on this sort of thing. Um, I'll be referencing the main one, which is actually the Hot Toys doll, I think. Um, anyway, so I am going to use a, this purple, but I'm going to thin it down a bit. And this will be going around his eyelids. It's a very true purple. And you can see how little I put on. Very minimal. It's just to put a bit of colour there. Next I'll be working on the cheeks and I've mixed up that mixed up that magenta colour with some red to make a sort of more magenta, more true magenta. 
I have been testing the colours on my arm and I want this to be a bit more red. I'm trying to match the, the colours I can see um, under his cheeks of the reference. I'll be applying this to his nose and cheek area. I wish I didn't record that, but you can see it in the background there. Next, I'm going to up his ear colour, which will be white and yellow. This is for the area around his ear rather than the inside. So you can see on this reference where he's getting some uh, subsurface scattering. Um, that his ears have this peachy hue towards the end. Again, this is where the blood vessels are going to be. Taking that same colour I mixed up, I'm just going to be adding orange into it. Again, if you're using a paintbrush, you would just be adding this in and diluting it with lots of water before applying it in thin layers. And when you apply in thin layers, you apply a layer, let it dry. Apply a second layer as it dries, working very slowly. But if you go with thick layers, it will look absolutely awful. I'm adding a lot of orange to this, the point where it is essentially just orange. But I'm trying my best to colour match that reference that I have. I know this goes from orange on it. I added a little bit of red to make this a bit more of a true bright orange. Constantly testing on my arm and looking at the red ones. So because I drop that paint on him, I then start wiping it down and realise that at this point I should probably be knocking back how much paint I put on anyway. So then when I apply the orange, I apply it very concentrated to the corner's edge. Um, alongside the, I don't know what it's called, but the fold of the ear. I then add way more red um, because I want to do this in stages. But I do the same, I highlight those shadow, shadows and shaded areas with that bright red orange. I then go in and add a little bit of this to the cheeks and nose to put a bit more warmth in those areas and homogenize the colors. It might look a bit intense now, but this will be the end result, trust me. So now we've done a thing called underpainting, we're going to get on with doing the... It's not called overpainting, but same energy. With that same colour we used as a base, I'm going to go through and apply a very watered down thin layer over everything. You can see on that ear, I placed it around the edge and it just... That warmth is still there, but now his skin colour is over the top. It's hard to explain, but it is effective. Um, I then go through adding that thin layer to both ears and to his face and cheeks. And you can see that he just has that warmth underneath the skin and it creates the illusion of depth. I then add a very light touch to the very tips of the fingernail. And you can see side by side that we still have a lot of work to do. I'm going to be displaying what I meant when I said you can paint with a brush in this area and that's mostly because I wanted a bit more control than the airbrush can give me. I started by wetting the brush, putting a tiny bit of paint on and then wetting it again. And you can see just how thin down this paint is as I work it into the ear. The next stage is varnishing. Please make sure to use safety gear when you use your varnish. And these are the colour of pencil that I definitely recommend grabbing for this project in particular. You want a nice grey, some greens, and some oranges. And a peach, and a white. And some shading colours. I have a lot of colour pencils, but these are the colours I definitely recommend. The one I use most though is this grey. It really adds a nice uh, colder hue to create shadow and depth. Um, there's not much to this, th this part of the face up beyond just referencing your photos like crazy. I'm trying to explain here that his eyes and eyelids um, have these creases coming off and uh, they come in a bit closer than the skull does. <laughs> Clearly I decided that I wanted to knock back his blush a bit more, so added a bit more of that 
green on top. A lot of this process is going backwards and forth, and I'm really trying my best to explain the shapes I'm drawing as I go. So if you want to watch this without sound, you can see me highlight the shapes I'll be working on. I also highlighted the creases from his ears towards his eyes to create that mm, more unified and more depth to the sculpt. I highlighted all of the pre-sculpted creases as well so that it would look unified across the whole figure. Here I am going backwards and forwards, taking it far away from me so I can see what it looks like from a distance. Now this is one of the hardest parts, it's creating this little nose ridge, and you will need to definitely reference the artwork here. I tried to zoom in so you can see the shapes I'm creating as best you can. You sort of have to create a little W above his nose, but he does have, in fact, five lines coming off of that shape of his nose. And then you'll need to draw down from him to his nose bridge to create that thick brow he has. Here I again just uh, re going over all the lines on the pre done sculpt so that it all looks the same. Shack shading lines. For the upper part of his nose, we're just um, following along his little smile lines, uh, deviating from the sculpt in some way, um, and trying not to follow it too closely because otherwise it'll create a non friendly look. The chin part I really struggled with on this one in particular, but um, essentially, we're just trying to create that small little whiny baby lip that he always has. Here I am, I'm just drawing lines now on the eyelid, which will show that the eyelid has creases and difference. Now with this dark green, I'm just going over all the darkest points of the shadow, so the lines of his eyelid, the creases of his mouth, and the ridges in his nose. Clearly I accidentally did the ridges a bit too dark, so I've gone in a bit lighter. If you want to know what I'm removing the paint with, I would be using water to go back and just dab it off gently because now it's sealed I should be able to remove things easily. Now with the white brush I just went around all of the areas that are light lightened um, so his around the ridges of his very tippy eyelids and drew some lines to show those creases and folds on his eyelid from where it opens and closes. A very key point is to do his inner corner of his eye. And those little moustache creases. Well, upper lip creases, yeah, the other I really tried to show all the areas that I did close up. Um, a lot of this process wasn't even meant to be a tutorial. It was meant to be more of a progress video, but I thought I'd walk you through it in case you want to try and attempt it yourself. I'm using the white to um, give depth to all those creases as well by placing a white line alongside that dark gray line we put in earlier, well, mid gray. And here I am, I, 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 I went a bit too harsh on the lip creases, so I went back in. On his cheeks, I'm stippling this red watercolor paint pencil all over to give the illusion of blood vessels and then I just knock them back with that water and rub them in. I went a bit too ham for the tutorial so I have to go a bit more. Yeah. I use um, not just one shade of red, I actually use a few different shades of red and you can sort of see, there it is. Now with that peach colour I was talking about earlier, I go around the eyelids. 
because on the sculpt, on the actual Grogu, he has a lot of um, peach in his silicone mix, so when the light shines through, it's like warm. Um, the inner corner tear duct has this little V-shape coming off, and it's very important to actually get that. Like a little bit of winged eyeliner, I guess. I have the tear duct in the very, very inner corner with that orange colour, and I line the inside of the eyelid with it as well. Um, the waterline, if not, give makeup. That's called. But White is for around the tear duct, not on the tear duct. Yes, yeah, so I essentially I go through with a few different pencils and uh, apply them in areas and keep building things up. For the ears with this orange, as you can see, I just add small little veins and then I go through and add them with the red as well. And then I take a dry paper towel and just rub off the excess, not a wet one and then go through and do it again, but very lightly. As you can see there, I scrubbed in with that orange into his lip and then took a dry paper towel and then wiped it down and back again. And then went back in with the orange and the red. A lot of this is adding and removing and adding and removing until you end up with something that is more natural looking. See, I'm very lucky to have my previous figure to be able to reference um, and all this access to art supplies. Um, but if anyone wants, so we can put a photo of exactly what. exactly what I used. I think a lot of people when they sculpt and paint little Grogu, they always assume he's just fair shades of green, but he has a lot of colours going on to make him look more alive and uncanny colour. Not uncanny colour, So there he is. It's a little close up of his face and all the little things I did. The veins in his ears and, and I noticed I got red all over the back of his head. But I also clearly have decided that some of those chalks were, not chalks, some of those pencil work were a bit intense. So I'm going back through to try and, <laughs> again, there will be a lot of me thinking I'm finished and not realizing I'm finished. Please, when you use Mr. Superclear, I'm gonna keep saying this, use safety equipment. Okay, now I'm gonna be reattaching his little head to his body with the cable ties. In the same way when I cut them off, I put them on. Now we just peel off the peel. Oh, it's so satisfying. This one less so. <laughs> and there he is, our two boys. I hope that if you follow this, you get the Grogu of your dreams. So this is my actual one, I've done a few little more mods, I've put wire in his arms so they're poseable, I've extended his arms, I've made him a little undershirt, and I 3D printed him some feet. I've also actually made him a better jacket at this point. But here are the two boys. Um, you can see the difference between the two different plastic types I was talking about earlier. Uh, good luck! <laughs>